write my stuff down. Okay, I would like to call this meeting to order. Will the secretary please call the roll? <clears throat> Mrs. Becker. Here. Mr. Cummings. Here. Ms. Guas. Mrs. Herrick. Here. Mr. Hong. Here. Mrs. Reese. Here. And President Lax. Here. We have a quorum. Please rise to salute the flag. <coughs> I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the rights of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies in which any business affecting their interests is discussed and acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this Act, the East Brunswick Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices. Written notice was also provided to the Sentinel, the Newark Star Ledger, the Home News Tribune, the Alternate Press of East Brunswick, and the Municipal Clerk of East Brunswick. All Board of Education meetings, with the exception of executive session discussions, are taped for later broadcast. It is a policy of the Board of Education that videotape meetings are not edited for any purpose. Individuals who speak at the Board's public meeting should be aware of these videotaping rules. Good evening to our diehard fans. Um, we are going to have a motion to go into closed session. So whereas the Board of Education must discuss matters which are not appropriate for discussion in a public meeting, these subjects are within the exception to the Open Public Meetings Act and are permitted to be discussed in closed session. The Board of Education intends to discuss the matters as follows, those items listed on tonight's agenda. The length of closed session is estimated to be one hour after which the public meeting of the Board shall reconvene and action may be taken. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education will recess into closed session for only the aforesaid subjects, and be it further resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education hereby declares that its discussion of the aforesaid subjects will be made public at a time when the public's interest in disclosure is greater than any privacy or governmental interest being protected from disclosure in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. So moved. moved by Mrs. Becker, second by Mr. Cummings. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Sentence, motion carries. We shall see you in an hour. Welcome back. I see you brought some friends. <laughs> Always fun. Um, we are going to start off the fun with Dr. Valeski's report. What do you have for us this evening? Well, Mrs. Lax, I have a lot of stuff to tell you about. Good evening, everyone. Frost celebrated Read Across America in March with some amazing guest readers and activities. Anthony <coughs> Zakaria visited the third and fourth grade students to read two stories to them. Anthony is an East Brunswick graduate and the son of Sue Zakaria, who is an instructional aide at Hughes. He is a nonverbal quadriplegic and operates his device and wheelchair with his head. He was happy to share how he communicates and participates in everyday activities just a little differently. Frost also hosted their first <coughs> library Olympic Games. Students at every grade level participated in events that were focused on the library sciences. Author Gail Galligan visited the K-4 classes at Frost. Students were so excited and engaged by her interactive presentation. Beth Ferry, author of Stick and Stone and many other children's books, visited Warren Store for Elementary School last week and shared her love of writing, reading, and the power of imagination with our students. The author visits were made possible through a grant funded by the East Brunswick Education Foundation. Central Elementary School celebrated Career Day on Friday, March 15th. Career Day introduced the students to a range of career options that explored their interest and helped them envision future jobs, none of which were interested in what I do, by the way. <laughs> Stu <laughs> students, students were able to meet the professionals and the vehicles they use for their careers. The vehicles present were a police car, a police rescue truck, a fire <coughs> truck, an ambulance, a pipe cleaning truck, and a mail truck. Our local community sent wonderful representatives that helped broaden our students' understanding of the world of work and the diverse opportunities available to them in their futures. The East Brunswick High School Orchestra and Chorus had a very successful five-day trip to Orlando, Florida. 
and they look very relaxed in this photograph, don't they? they? Do. The groups were rated in the excellent and superior categories, and additionally, the overall outstanding vocal soloist trophy was awarded to Charlotte Wells. And Charlotte is a sophomore at the high school. The 135 students in attendance represented East Brunswick Public Schools in a remarkable manner, both on and off the stage. So thank you to them for representing East Brunswick Public Schools so well on the national level. Living Voices took place at Churchill Junior High School. Living Voices uses historical perspectives based on real people, events. Living Voices combines live performances with audio, visual aids and discussion. Archival films and photos blended with sound and synchronized with a live actor provide a dynamic interactive experience of how the world looked, sounded, and felt during a significant time in history. All the eighth grade students saw The Right to Dream, which dramatized the story of the civil rights movement of the 1960s. And all of our ninth grade students saw Through the Eyes of a Friend, which tells the story of Anne Frank and the Holocaust. Last call for tickets to the East Brunswick Education Foundation Annual Partner and Excellence Dinner, which will be held on Tuesday, April 2nd. Information can be found on our website at ebnet.org slash ebef. The district will be hosting the 15th Annual Night of Jazz on Wednesday, April 3rd. This annual event is co-sponsored by the East Brunswick Education Foundation and the Mario A. DeCarolis Memorial Music Fund. This year's event will feature the Garden State Jazz Orchestra, along with performances by the Hammershold Upper Elementary School, Churchill Junior High School, the East Brunswick Jazz Bands, as well as the High School Jazz Choir. The Garden State Jazz Orchestra was founded in 2010 by director saxophonist Ken Zampella and accredited with being a wall of sound. This is a big band and an ensemble that features a variety of musical styles from jazz to swing and Motown to rock. Featuring accomplished musicians with a wide variety of experience and backgrounds, this group of individuals have come together to provide a quality entertainment to people of every age, as well as promote the betterment of jazz education. Tickets are now on sale for Night of Jazz and can be purchased at E-B Arts, that's E-B-A-R-T-S dot book ticks, B-O-O-K-T-I-X dot com. Just a reminder that all schools and district offices will be closed Monday, March 25th through Friday, March 29th for spring recess. And I hope everyone has an enjoyable break. And now I would like to turn it to <coughs> Mr. Juliana, who will provide an update on the board vacancy process and timeline. Thank you, Dr. Valeski. So um, at the last board meeting, we announced the procedures uh, for filling the two vacancies on the Board of Education. Information um, is available on the district website, the main page at ebnet.org. Uh, there is uh, a tile on that page that is specifically uh, noted to be board member vacancy and the instructions are uh, indicated within that tile. In addition, uh, we've had uh, two advertisements uh, in uh, the local newspapers and uh, it has also been running on EBTV. Um, in terms of the timelines, uh, those individuals who request um, packets to uh, make a submission for consideration. Those submissions must be received in my office no later than 1 p.m. April 5th, 2024. And that is in order to be considered for the vacancy. Uh, email submissions will not be accepted. So they must be paper submissions. Um, and so uh, beyond that, I ask the board attorney to um, add a few remarks regarding um, public communications. So any individual who is interested in applying for the vacancy or who may have already applied for the vacancy and is waiting for the board to engage the interview process, 
Um, it is advised that everyone please submit all additional information that you wish to be considered to the board secretary, whether it's in your application packet or to hold on to your information and share it with the board during the interview portion of that process. Um, and the reason being is that any individual communications, emails, or just contact with the individual board members uh, will not be considered. So it's not that the board members don't want to respond to individuals or get to know them, but in order to ensure fairness to the process and to everyone who's interested in applying, the board members are going to be considering the information as is shared with the entire board through the submission process and the interview process. So if you don't receive a response from any of the individual board members to any communications, emails, or um, just inquiries as to the status, it's because the board members are choosing to, um, with the advice of council, to ensure that the process is fair to all and transparent. So all information will be considered as a collective. Um, and no individual board members will be applying. So don't take that as an, any kind of slight, but it's really more to ensure fairness for the entire process. Thank you. And I believe, Mr. Julian, we're ready for your uh, tenant budget presentation. Good evening. This evening, the Board of Education will be adopting a tentative budget. Uh, before getting into uh, some of the information on the budget, I did want to take a few minutes to review um, the status of how the COVID-19 grants were utilized. I think that's uh, an important piece uh, as a refresher. Um, I had reviewed this during last year's process, but I think Given that we're at the end of the period for utilizing funds, um, I think the refresher is warranted. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each of these slides, but basically this provides an overview of each of the various grants that were received uh, from the federal government and how those funds were utilized. Uh, they applied toward mental health services, technology, um, in addition, we had many positions that were funded through uh, this process. We uh, performed various uh, upgrades to systems in our facilities, um, HVAC systems at four of our elementary schools, disinfecting systems in our buses. Um, again, you see on this slide mental health services and so on. Um, there was quite a bit that was funded, many millions of dollars funded through the federal grants. Um, and these funds, if they haven't already expired, are now in the process of expiring. So any of the items that were part of these grants that would be ongoing, there needs to be a resource to be able to fund these. So with that being said, let's talk about the tentative budget for the 2024-2025 school year. And I provided an update on a few of these items at the last meeting, but um, these are important to note. Uh, firstly, state aid. You see on this chart what the history of state aid had been, and for uh, many years in the middle of this chart, state aid remained flat. No changes to it uh, whatsoever. Then in the last few years, prior to the prospective year, uh, we start to see some gains in state aid. The objective from the state was to bring school districts that had been pretty much flat in state aid to where they should be. And that was supposed to take about a four-year process. And looking back over the last couple of years, one of the things that I noted during these budget presentations was just that. We were anticipating that there would be increases in state aid prospectively. And I believe last year in particular I said maybe one more year. And then that would probably be the end of state aid increases. As it turns out, that one more year is not happening. 
uh, we have a state aid reduction of over $1.3 million. Uh, we've heard stated uh, in the press that um, the governor had stated that state aid school funding was being fully funded. I think the anomaly in that is that the state funding formula was fully implemented. And through that formula, we see the result of a state aid reduction. We're not unique. East Brunswick is not unique to this particular situation. There are many, many districts, hundreds of districts in the state that are seeing state aid reductions. On the other hand, there are also many districts that are seeing very large increases in state aid uh, for next year. Nevertheless, let's focus on East Brunswick. $1.3 million of a reduction in state aid has a substantial impact upon our ability to provide services to our students. The next item is the charter school increase. The uh, charter school in East Brunswick is, uh, was approved by the Department of Education to open uh, additional section for students. Based on the projected enrollment, the district, the East Brunswick Public Schools, must fund those additional students. The result is $740,000 that comes out of our budget. So take that together with the state aid reduction. We're now looking at about $2.4 million in reductions. Very significant. And the story does get worse. Because when you take into consideration the fact that not only did we have a state aid reduction, not only do we have a substantial increase in charter school costs, and what I said early on, that we're not receiving that additional state aid that was anticipated, we have a very significant issue. We have been working to plug, figure out how we bridge revenue and appropriations to the tune of over $8 million. That's not easy to do. It has been an arduous task, and we are not finished. I remind the board and the public that this is a tentative budget. That means that it's a placeholder. It is a document that must go to the state for review, and we will be continuing to do work on this budget. Health benefits for existing staff. This chart depicts what the changes in health benefit costs um, are from the current year to next year. We are generally seeing on the health benefit rates a 7% increase in rate. So the budget at this time is $196.8 million. Revenue and appropriations are in balance. We will not at this time be discussing the details underlying the budget only because that we still have a lot of work to do. The budget is um, in the process of being reviewed, reanalyzed, discussed, so that we're making the best possible decisions given the circumstances. There won't be a magic pot of money that bridges an $8 million gap. It's important that everyone understand that. There are very hard decisions being made. They're not final, but there are very, very hard decisions being made. But I will say this. This won't be the first time that the district has had to undergo significant reductions 
due to state aid circumstances. We've faced this two times in the past, about 14 years ago, 15 years ago, and we recovered. And I have no doubt that that will be the case going forward, but this will be painful. In terms of the budgeted tax levy, tax levy increase on the general fund at over $5.7 million. That includes the use of bank's cap. Bank's cap is an amount of money that's generated through the state formulas in its budgetary system that says at some point, if it's needed, you may raise this amount in additional taxes. And so that is incorporated into the $5.7 million. Our debt service fund, which is the fund that pays our mortgage, is going down. That tax levy is going down. So effectively, the net tax increase will be $5.487 million. $5 that's a tentative amount at this time, and that reflects a composite tax levy increase of about 3.8%. Now, I also want to point this out, because we're not happy with 3.8%, but I think it's important to note that for every one half of a percent that might be reduced in that 3.8%, that will require an additional $720,000 in reductions beyond the $8 million we're already dealing with. The public hearing on this budget will be April 25th, 2024, and rest assured that the board and administration will be working diligently between now and then to arrive at what that final budget will be. At the public hearing, we will be presenting the final budget. No changes can be made at the public hearing. That will be the final budget. In the coming days, we will be posting uh, the user-friendly budget on the district website. So um, that information provides summary information. The user-friendly budget is one that is generated through the Department of Education's budgetary system. Okay, now moving on to the next piece. Last year at this time, I provided a report regarding the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. So this is an update on that. So, as a reminder, uh, last February, the governor announced a sweeping electrification initiative. There was $70 million in funds dedicated for medium and heavy duty electric vehicles and charging infrastructure. In March, there was a press uh, release naming the projects funded and East Brunswick was one of those projects and it named that 11 electric buses would be funded for East Brunswick, and the details would follow. Prior to this, the district had made several applications for grant funding to fund fully the cost of replacing 11 buses, and we had been rejected several times because the focus was from the state's level, they wanted to focus, this is what they told me, on the urban districts. East Brunswick was not a candidate. So we were cautiously optimistic when we were advised that we were now approved. But the devil is always in the details. So let's go through and visit the devil. 
This is the cost to proceed with the project. So in the first part of this chart, it depicts the DEP grant funding. The maximum funding per bus is $300,000. The maximum funding per charging unit is $20,000. And then there's funding for a data logger where the state will be monitoring the usage of the vehicle. So one bus total funding, $321,000. What's the cost, the real cost? For one bus, the last price that we received was over $440,000. The cost of an electrical charging station, 86, more than $86,000. And the data logger is a wash. The base funding shortage for each bus is over $207,000. That does not include the cost of adding cameras to the interior and exterior of our buses, as we have on all of our district-owned buses, or the cost of radios that are used to communicate with the transportation department and the police in an emergency. That's another almost $12,000. We enlisted PSENG to come and evaluate the facility um, because we would need to uh, have a change in the transformer. PSENG visited and they said, you're going to need to do an electrical upgrade at the site. I can't even tell you what that cost would be, but we're talking about a substantial cost to do an electrical upgrade at the site. So without the electrical upgrade, we would be looking at a base funding shortage, as I said, for one bus of over, well, if you take into consideration the required add-ons, nearly $220,000 shortfall per bus, or to do all 11 buses, over $2 million. I'm sorry to tell you that there is no way that this project can move forward if the district is expected to, to take on that kind of a cost. The, the original grant process was to fund fully the program. What we, and we've had many, many meetings with the DEP in trying to work through this process. What the DEP found was that there were too many moving parts, too many moving parts to what they wanted to accomplish. So, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but what the bottom line came down to was they had to come up with a number that they would provide as an allowance, and the rest, they basically said, you figure it out. Yes? Yes. So there we have it. I'm sorry. I don't have good news tonight. You don't have good news tonight. No. Um, are all the other districts that were approved for these buses in the same situation? I would I imagine mean, they would be because the cost, the cost, the amount of funding that's being provided versus what the cost of an electric bus is, districts would have to make up the difference. It's, it's so substantial. So that's what I'm wondering, all this money that they then approved, this additional $70 million. So I'll tell you who would be able to get it the districts that got a lot of state aid. Ah. I'm sorry, it was a little bit snarky. You, have, you but know what, you have to have a sense of humor. I get it. And we, we, we yeah. just a reminder for the board and members of the board who are, who are newer to membership, we've been talking about this for the better part of 10 years. Mm -hmm. 
And we had hoped that the cost of the individual bus vehicles would come substantially down, and they haven't. Yeah. And, you know, we've come to figure just like on a lot of the large scale projects, electrification, the, the logistics of manufacturing, you know, the battery pack, and that, that's the major component driving the cost of, of manufacturing these vehicles. So that, that has not shifted to a, an economy of scale yet. No, that's just a shame. Finally thought we were there. Okay. Questions okay. on that? I just wanted to mention that I think um, to note that this was something that um, Dr. Valeski and the board tried to champion uh, nine years ago, Victor, would you say? Ten. Um, ten years ago, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Valeski went down to, well, Victor, I don't want to speak for you, but. Um, oh, you're this, doing a good job. Well, thank you. Um, but he went down to the University of Delaware. Yes to see prototypes and um, to get educated professional development, if you will, on the concept of these buses. So this has been something that um, he's invested time and the board has well, invested. Well, the board did, with well, a bunch of board members. Right. We all, we all, That's Barbara, right. were you on then? No, I was before. No? Oh. Yeah, I didn't go. But you went. I went. Okay. President Lawrence. Lori went. Lori went. So they, a lot of time has it was a lot gone into this, so this is a, a big disappointment. But um, has do you, Bernie? Do you think that there would be uh, enough of an outcry of the districts that didn't get ten million dollar <laughs> increases that they would consider um, offsetting the cost more? No. Unrealistic. I I don't I don't see that happening. Okay. I th so let me just add on to that. I think I think what might be a driver is if there are a if there are a lot of districts that were awarded grants and are unable to follow through, and that and then the initiative just is nothing, and so they'll have to go back and retool and figure out what do we do differently. What, no. what do they do differently? They do differently? It's not us that needs to do something differently. You can't dangle something wonderful and so wonderful for the environment, wonderful as a role model for our children to live with sustainability, moving forward, um, embracing sustainability. You can't dangle that in front of us and then say, oh, did we not tell you that we're not paying the whole cost? Well, and I think another important aspect of this is you know, we would, to, to try and cover the cost for one bus, we'd have to really change our replacement program. And so I think part of the concern becomes what happens to those vehicles that we now extend the amount of time that we own them because with warranties dropping off, repair costs will increase, we'll end up incurring other costs that we're not having now. And so we extend how long we keep a bus now, we incur additional costs as a result to pay for one bus. We add two buses, and that goes even further into exacerbating the problem with our existing fleet. Not that we have a problem with our existing fleet. We have a good program in place to replace vehicles. But I'm really very hesitant to try to change that because it will result in costs that I don't think we can even anticipate what yeah. that would be. And, and you also recall that, that I believe it was last year, right, Mr. Giuliano, that you started to expand last year's budget, or this year's budget, was the expansion of the bus fleet. Mm -hmm. And so that was an initiative that we presented to the board in terms of uh, trying to phase out our reliance on contracted services, because our, our bus fleet and our bus drivers are of such a high standard and such a level of professionalism 
that we wanted to get there where all of our students, or at least most of our students, were being delivered uh, by East Brunswick drivers and East Brunswick vehicles. So that would have an impact on that initiative too. It's a huge loss for us. Okay, Mr. Happy, thank you. Um, Chris is not here this evening, so we are going to go on to the good of the cause for the public. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. To protect the privacy of all students and staff, concerns regarding individual students and staff members should generally be addressed by first meeting with the appropriate administrative staff. In order to permit the fair and orderly expression of such comment, the board should provide a period for public comment in every meeting of the board. Residents are um, given three minutes in which they can speak to the board. And we always remind you that your comments are to us. We are not going to be communicating back. And if anything does need follow-up, we will leave your information with the lovely ladies up front. And that being said, is there anyone this evening that would like to speak to the board? Okay. Quiet group tonight. It's okay, you're still shell-shocked by Mr. Gillian, I understand. Um, so I'm going to move on to our Board of Education agenda. May I please have a motion for the two items under the Board of Education? Uh, one item. I'm so sorry, the one item. Sorry. That's okay. Mrs. Becker is going to move it. Is there someone who would like to second it for me? Second. Second by Mr. Cummings. Is there any discussion on the one item? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, bringing us to community programs. May I please have a motion for the one item on community so programs? Moved. So moved. by Mrs. Gua, second by Mrs. Becker. Is there any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I please have a motion for the five items under curriculum and instruction? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker. Second. Second by Mrs. Herrick. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Becker. Um, I was just wondering if um, somebody could elaborate a little on the grapeseed pilot program choice. Certainly. Uh, the state is requiring districts to start providing uh, services for multilingual learners, English language learners in preschool. This is a uh, curriculum piece that we want to pilot at no charge to the district in, our pre in one of our preschool classes and see how the students and the teachers like the product and then look to potentially implement it next school year. Thank you. Anything else? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, abstentions? Motion carries. May I please have a motion for the four Aye. items this evening on financial services? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker? Second. Second by Mrs. Guas. Is there any discussion on those four items on financial services this evening? No, then I'm going to ask the secretary to please call the roll. Mrs. Becker. Yes. Mr. Cummings. Yes. Ms. Gloss. Yes. Mrs. Herrick. Yes. Mr. Hong. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. President Lax. Yes, motion carries. May I please have a motion for the two items under human resources this evening? So Mrs. Becker and Second. Mrs. Herrick. Is there any discussion? Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker. Yes. Mr. Cummings. Yes. Ms. Gloss. Yes. Mrs. Herrick. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Hong. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. President Lax. Yes. Motion carries. And I'm now looking for a motion for staff development this evening. So moved. So you look at them when they call. Mrs. Becker and Mr. Cummings. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Aye. Abstention. Motion carries. We have eight items this evening under student services. So moved. Mrs. Becker and Mr. Cummings. Is there any discussion on those eight? Nope. Then I'm going to ask the secretary to please call the roll. Mrs. Becker. Yes. Mr. Cummings. Yes. Mrs. Gloss. Yes. Mrs. Herrick. Yes. Mr. Hong. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. President Lax. Yes. Motion carries. And may I please have a motion for transportation services at item this evening. So moved. Mrs. Becker and Second. Mr. Cummings. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, I was staring him down. Um, is there any discussion on transportation? No, then I'm going to ask the secretary to again please call the roll. Mrs. Becker. Yes. Mr. Cummings. Yes. Ms. Gloss. Yes. Mrs. Herrick. Yes. <clears throat> I don't know why I had a hard time getting that out. 
Mr. Hong. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. President Lax. Yes. Motion carries. Bringing us to committee reports, information items, and for the good of the cause for the board. Mrs. Becker. Um, I actually had a question, um, a request for Bernie. Um, if there's a, a statistic he could provide, maybe next meeting. Um, when we talk about the charter school, the charter school accepts children not just from East Brunswick, correct? From Correct. Is it throughout the county or the state? Throughout the state. Okay. Would it be possible t to find out, you, is it available, the breakdown of how many of those children are East Brunswick residents? Yes. I do uh, want to note that um, just for information purposes for the public that the funding that comes out of the district budget is for East Brunswick students only. Okay, so I'd still just be curious yep. to find out how many children. Okay. We'll, re we'll be glad to report out on that uh, for the April 11th meeting. Thank you. Mrs. Reese. Uh, just go to the course kind of thing about uh, the Living Voices presentation at Churchill. I, I was lucky to attend, and I had been to Churchill for a while, and I just want to compliment the principal, Mr. Matt Hannes. It was a wonderful presentation, um, very meaningful. The students asked very uh, thoughtful questions, and it brought history to life, or some of it more difficult history for the students to have to grapple with, and I thought they did so very well. The teachers prepared them well, and they were about to learn some of these units, so they may not have had the particular historical knowledge, but they knew how to compose the questions, how to think logically, and, and to be kind. And um, also in the hallway, they had butterf the butterflies up, or the butterfly effect. So I want to thank the teachers and the staff at Churchill. It just was a very nice, um, it wrote, they had on the butterflies good things they had done for one another, kindnesses that they had given. So um, in this day and age, it's nice to see some positive things happening, um, in, in, you know, among our teens. And I really think that there was a, a very warm environment that day at Churchill. So. I wanted to compliment the, the administration and the staff over there, and, t and the students, of course. Thank you. Thank you for bringing a little kindness to the board this evening. It's always good to keep in perspective that we're raising our next generation of kind human beings. Mm -hmm. These are ways to teach them, so thank you. And Mrs. Herrick. To piggyback off of Churchill, I just want to let uh, the community know that the Churchill PTA is having 7th and 8th grade TGIF on April 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. And um, if you wanted to register or sign up, it's always in Mr. Well, it was last week and probably will be this week in Mr. Hannes's uh, weekly, weekly newsletter that comes out on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Mrs. Boss. Oh, I just wanted, I know. I just wanted to say thank you to the administrators and the teachers for the week of conferences. I realized while I was waiting outside an elementary school classroom that this was my 14th year of conferences in East Brunswick, and I felt ancient all of a sudden. Um, but it was, I believe, the smoothest year of conferences, which was just you, know, you sort of realize as and I ran from the elementary school to the high school and got to each place on time. And I just wanted to compliment the teachers for their level of preparedness for the conferences. They were so ready and so energetic, and I just kept looking at them going, I know how long this day is and how long yesterday was, and still um, the amount of time and energy they were willing to give to the parents was just really appreciated. That's pretty cool. I actually got to see some of the teachers, the memorial teachers, since I live right behind the school, walking through the neighborhood, which I figured was their break in between the conferences. It was kind of fun. So. Okay. Well, we do, surprise, surprise, uh, we do have a need for another closed session. So whereas the Board of Education must discuss matters which are not appropriate for discussion in a public meeting, and these subjects are within the exceptions to the Open Public Meetings Act, and permitted to be discussed in closed section. The Board of Education intends to discuss matters as follows, those items listed on tonight's agenda. The length of closed session is estimated to be one hour after which the public meeting of the Board shall reconvene and action will be taken. Now therefore be it resolved that East Brunswick Board of Education will recess into closed session for only the aforesaid subjects. So moved. Mrs. Becker and Mrs. Herrick, any discussion? 
All those in favor? Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. And for those who don't feel like waiting the hour for us to come back out, have a wonderful spring break and happy holidays. It's a lot of good holidays these days. So lots to celebrate.